Welcome to Eaglebrook Church. We are so glad that you're here. I hope you are off to a wonderful start in 2022. We kicked off a series last week called Normal Isn't Working. Week one, Jason talked about how our normal schedule isn't working. I think we all can attest to that. Uh, We can have our schedules or our schedules can have us. Jason had a great message on that, and I encourage you to go back online and check that out this week. I want to talk to you about how our normal friendships aren't working. I don't know if you've ever thought about your friendship rules and where they came from. I want you to think back to the very first time that you and I made our first friend. I mean, we were in grade school and perhaps we walked into a a lunchroom and we were trying to figure out where in the world do we fit. And then the older we got, Uh, the more we began to understand the world splits us up into categories of male, female, athlete, academia, standout, popular, and then, you know, that neutral group of people who said, I reject all of those categories, and we're going to create our own, and you just kind of, you feel like a misfit a little bit, and then maybe, just maybe, you were one of those lucky human beings who had someone raise their hand in that lunchroom, in that classroom, and they said, hey, Come sit with me. And before you knew it, you made a friend over a Lunchable. It was like, this is awesome. And depending on how introverted or or extroverted you are, you are able to sort of enlarge your friendship circle. I'm somewhere in between. I don't know if I'm an introvert or extrovert, but I I did play basketball from grade school to college. And what that gave me was somewhat of a a prepackaged community of people around me that would call me, well, their friend, okay? And so as I developed all of these friends, I, I, I began to realize that there were some of these like unspoken friendship rules. And probably the number one unspoken friend rule is around loyalty. And it's this idea, get my back no matter what. No matter what? Well, now hold on a second. That, the, the, the no matter what, get my back means if I rob a bank, we are both robbing a bank, and we're taking your car, okay? It's like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. If I get in a fight, you know, we are getting a fight. If I go to jail, we go together, ride or die. I'm like, I don't know. That sounds pretty extreme to me. I heard a, a friend describe another friend. He's like, man, this guy's got my back. This is a guy you want on your side in the middle of a bar fight. And I just thought to myself, why are we at the bar fighting? Why is this... How is this the scenario? How is this the scenery? How come the scenery isn't my friend that I go to the movies with? This is the guy I want to work out with or the guy I want to get a burrito with from Chipotle. Like, why are we throwing, you know, chairs at human beings at bars? Like, why is that the standard of true friendship? I'm like, this is crazy. Here's the deal. I'm all for loyalty. But sometimes the unspoken friendship rule gives the idea that it's my job as a friend to support you. No matter how immoral, dangerous, or illegal your decision is. It's not my job to support you in every decision. It's my job to love you. Not to share a prison cell with you, okay? That's not what we're trying to do. My best friend, he's not ride or die. You want to know why? He's a lawyer, okay? If I go to jail, I'm going by myself, and he will prove his friendship to me when he gets me out of jail, okay? I don't need him to go to jail with me, okay? Like, I have no issue with that at all. I mean, have you ever had somebody get mad at you for not supporting them on their dumb decision? You know what I mean? They're like, what do you mean you won't co-sign on the loan with me? Come on, man. I thought we were friends. No money down, 0% interest for a year, you know? Or have you ever lied to a friend and supported them in a dating decision? They're like, aren't they amazing? You're like, yeah, they're terrible, okay? It's the worst when you've experienced a breakup and your friends all of a sudden become conveniently honest. I never liked him in the first place. Never thought he was good for you. Where were you two years ago? I was lying to you. That's where I was two years ago. (laughs) And it's interesting. I think over the past couple of years, I think what we've all experienced in our friendships is a little bit of of a transition, right? I mean, it just doesn't look the same. There are people we were close to pre-pandemic that maybe we haven't even seen at all 
in three years. I had a friend I saw the other day who had no kids the last time I saw them. Now they got two. I went, how did this happen? They go, well, you know how it happened. I go, I know, but I just, I just, I just didn't know. You have like whole human beings that are like three feet tall already. Like, you, when did you have kids? He's like, I mean, the pandemic, I had kids. It's like, they just grew up. And I was like, the last time we played ball, you didn't have any kids. Now you got two. Like, this is like, it, it's things are just constantly shifting. Now, now here's the deal. I, I'm not really sure what rules sort of govern your friendships. I'm not sure what guiding principles you have for how you do friendships. But this I know. I, I know that there are some norms that you and I can experience. And today I want to look at four, four norms that most of us experience in our friendships and four possibilities of what could be if you and I decided to be intentional. Intentional. Because I see friendships like a shifter in a car, okay? There, there are friendships that could be in drive, okay? They are moving us forward. We are going places. And then there are those friendships, well, they're neutral, taking us nowhere. These are the relationships that, well, they don't have any direction. These are those relationships that could be described as whatever happens, happens. Wherever we end up tonight is wherever we end up. These relationships have no purpose. They have no desired destination. And then there are those friendships, if we're honest, they're in reverse. They're taking us backwards. Th these relationships leave us in a place where we end up with quite a few regrets. Shouldn't we all take a moment and think about the friends we spend the most time with? And answer honestly, which category will we put them in? Because what's normal is that most of our friendships are in neutral. This is where most of us just move with the herd. We just move with the crowd. Wherever the wind takes us is where we end up. We don't even know what our mood is, but then our Facebook friends decide our mood for us. You weren't even angry on Tuesday, but all of a sudden, Wednesday, here we are. Why? Why? Because that's where the crowd went. Neutral friendships. What's possible? What's possible is what I believe is where we have friendships where we're actually sharpening one another. I love what King Solomon says in Proverbs. He says, as iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. This speaks of a friendship that is constantly trying to make the other party better. I consider myself incredibly wealthy because I have about eight to 10 guys in my life who do this for me. They simply make me better. Do you have anybody in your life that just makes you better? Do you have anybody in your life that because they're in it, you're a better spouse. Because they're in it, you're a better coworker. Because they're in your life, you're a better parent. You're a better neighbor. You're a better leader. It, is there anybody in your life that makes you a better follower of Christ? It's like they just, they just make you want to read scripture more. They make you want to go to church. They make you want to just be a better Christian. I mean, I, I, here's, I, I know you might have your spouse in your life. and You might have your parents in your life. You might have great siblings and, and a nice structure there. But, but today I want to ask you, do you have good friends? Do they challenge you to spend more time with God and, and pray for your family and keep your eyes on a, on a purpose that's bigger than yourself? It, if we get back into the analogy of friendships being like the shifter in a car, if we're looking at the vehicle itself, some of us, our friendships, we're riding shotgun. We're... we're we're in the passenger seat of that relationship. We're going along for the ride. They carry more influence in that relationship than we do. So if they're amazing, they may be taking us somewhere amazing. However, if they're mediocre, we might end up somewhere mediocre. And all of us have to take inventory and look at every friendship and ask, are they taking us somewhere we want to go? However, some of our friendships, we're in the driver's seat. 
And they're going along for our ride. And then we have to ask, are we taking them somewhere they want to go? Oh, this is massive when you're in middle school and high school and college, especially you. Every single student has to pause and ask, am I the type of friend that steers others towards Christ? Or am I the type of friend influencing other people to do things that don't help them even have a relationship with God at all? And I know there's so much pressure to be cool, but at some point we have to grow out of our desire to be cool and step into being a friend that is helpful. I mean, if we're looking at the proverb, that the question should then be, do they sharpen me? I mean, if we're really looking at this thing, we got to go, man, as iron sharpens, do they sharpen me? But we can't just stop there. Then it goes to, do I sharpen them? I mean, we've heard our whole lives, surround yourself with good people. Now, it's not terrible advice, but it insinuates that we're the center of our friendship circle. And it also insinuates that we're good people. Are we? I mean, I I would hope so, but what we must keep in mind is that we are surrounding someone else. And we have to pause just for a moment and reflect on whether or not We're sharpening them. I mean, sure, it'd be great if the people around us helped us grow in our relationship with God. But shouldn't we wake up with a great intention that thinks about how we might sharpen one another? Yes, surround yourself with good people, but you should be the friend that others would be wise to surround themselves with. Be the friend. Oh, I had a friend. Text me a couple days ago. You know, this is all the text said. It says, hey, man, thinking about you this morning. Man, I want to encourage you to do three things. Be with Jesus. Become like Jesus. Do what Jesus did. That's all it said. He said, said, man, just be with Jesus today. Hey, Ron, I know you got a lot of stuff going on, man. I know you got a lot of places to be. I know you got things to do. Listen, man, I I, know you're important. I I get it, man, but I just want to encourage you. In the midst of your already busy year, be with Jesus today. You know, and I just, I read that text message and I thought, I want to be more intentional with my friends like this in 2022. What's the second norm that we experience in our friendships? Common courtesy. Common courtesy. How you doing? I mean, I mean, it's sometimes uh, the thing that somebody says whenever they're in charge of a room, they could be leading a meeting or they could be doing public speaking. They walk out and they say, hey, how's everybody doing? Which, I mean, it's, it's what is it? It's courteous, except it's not practical. Why? Because for the half of the room that's doing good, let's say they shout, I say, hey, how you doing? And somebody goes, good, good, good. But what about everybody else who's doing horrible? What are they supposed to shout back? Horrible, getting a divorce. How are you? Chapter 11 for us this week, what about your family? Y'all good? I mean, like, it, like what, are, what are we supposed to do? And, and, and here's the deal. It's not that we don't care. It's that we don't always have the time to. Because <laughs> what I know about you, what I know about me, is we are the kings and queens of drive-by check-ins. Aren't we? Oh, we love doing this. How you doing? You good? <laughs> it's good to see you. Like, it's like our upper half says we care, but our lower half is like, I got some places to go. You know what I mean? Like, hey, we're good. I mean, this is the parking lot, church lobby interaction, man. You good, man? Good to see y'all. Like, I mean, it's like, we're not afraid of getting COVID. We're just busy. You know what I mean? We're just moving as fast as we possibly can, checking in with people like this. We do this at work. We do this at school, but we're constantly moving. And I just have to wonder. What it would look like for you and I to slow down long enough to to really ask people, how are you doing? Have you ever written a long email and gone back to the top of the email to write, how are you? (laughs) Happy New Year. Hope the family stayed safe. That has nothing to do with your email at all, but you actually said what you wanted to say, and then you went back and added the pleasantry, so to speak. You ever needed something from somebody you hadn't checked in on in six months? You just wanted to ask a question and move on with your day, but you felt stuck with the pleasantries. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that's not bad. I just think that's normal. But what's possible? Uncommon care. Uncommon care. I, I love what the Apostle Paul said. He says, I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon that I also may be cheered when I receive news about you. I have no one else like him who will show genuine concern for your welfare. For everyone looks out for their own interest, not those of Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul in his letter to the church of Philippi describes Timothy as someone he knew would show genuine concern for other people. How many people do we have in our friendship circle that we would describe as that? Showing genuine concern. I've been really convicted by this lately because I, I feel like I'm generally nice, but not always intentionally caring. And sometimes I'm just moving at such a fast pace that I don't pause long enough to look someone in the eyes and convince them that I have genuine concern about how they're actually doing. There's a guy that I see and talk to every single week. And recently, I made a social media post that simply said, which year was harder for you? 2020, 20, 2021. And tell me why. And I, just, I was just curious how people were doing. And this person, a person I see and talk to frequently, wrote, 2021, because he lost six family members in one single year. Six. And I just thought, I've asked him how he's doing plenty of times in 2021. But they were all drive-by check-ins. And you know what he said every single time? I'm good. I'm good. Which is what our natural response is to just about every question anytime somebody's asking how anything is going. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't want to be normal. I want to slow down. I want to slow down long enough for at least one person in my life. Is there somebody in your life that you could just whew, hit the brakes with just for a second and to go, man, I just, I, I want to genuinely care. I want to show genuine concern because it breaks our hearts anytime we hear about a friend that has recently gone through a divorce and what's our typical response? Dude, I didn't, I didn't know you guys were having problems. I didn't know. We didn't know because we didn't take the time to ask. And I think what contributes to that is actually our third norm that we experience in, in friendships. What's normal is Mundane conversations. Mundane conversations. Do you want to know what's normal to talk about? The weather. It's cold. Duh. Okay. It's snowing. We get it. It's freezing. Hello. We, we look. Okay. Look around. We know. We get it. Normal is let's talk about COVID. I mean, how can we not? Our colleagues, classmates, and family members are constantly having to cancel stuff. They're getting stuck overseas. I mean, it's a whole thing. Normal is let's talk about sports. The Wild, the Vikings, the Wolves, the Gophers, the Twins. I mean, you name it. I could easily spend an hour on the phone talking about any one of the above with any one of my friends. I mean, I've got, I've got a whole crew of, of, of fantasy sports, football, basketball. I mean, it's, it's a whole group chat. I mean, it's a part of our daily conversation. I mean, like we just, it's all day, every day. Okay, man, who you putting in your lineup? All right, you got LeBron. All right, man, you got Carl Anthony Towns. Okay, all right. And, I, and it's, this, it's this back and forth thing. And again, I don't think that stuff is bad. It's just normal. But I, I think we all have to pause and ask, is normal working? Let me ask it this way. Is normal helpful? Because I think what's possible is meaningful conversations. I love what the Apostle Paul said in in Colossians, he says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, 
so that you may know how to answer everyone. Let your conversations mean something. Let your conversations have some substance to them. I mean, have you ever just stopped and thought about, what do me and my friends talk about all the time? Like, what consumes our conversations? I mean, on some level, if we're going to go deeper into our friendships and have meaningful conversations, I think that sometimes we're going to have to ask meaningful questions. I think we've got to get past, how you doing? I mean, again, it's, it's courteous, but if we, if we really want our conversations to be full of substance and full of grace, we might have to take it to, to a new level. I mean, what, what, if we, what if we got really intentional? What if we really started going, you know what, hey, uh, tell me the best and worst part of your week. Tell me the best and worst part of your weekend. Imagine if, imagine if we just said, hey, I'm not going to give you an easy out. I'm not just going to give you something that you could just go, good. Bad, uh, one word, one word responses, but just imagine if we were intentional in that way. I mean, imagine if we were intentional with social media and our conversations there. This isn't just conversations offline. These are conversations online as well. I mean, have you ever just scrolled through and just thought, what are we posting? What are, what are, what are, what are we saying all the time? What are, our, what are our conversations full of? Imagine if every single one of us went home today and decided we we're going to think of one person, one person to have a meaningful conversation with, to say, hey, um, Larry, we already know it's cold outside. How's your soul? Man, how, how, do you feel like you have purpose in your vocation? Man, if there's anything that you could do in the world, man, what would you do? What would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? I mean, what if we started to like dream together in our conversations online, offline, we're just full of salt, full of grace that says, man, if we're going to talk, if we're going to get a meal, if we're going to get coffee, we are going to have a meaningful conversation. Imagine if we all considered one friend this week to have that meaningful conversation with. I know that's not normal, but I think it could be. One of my daily sports fantasy friends recently shared with me that he's been struggling really bad with mental health. And once again, I got mad at myself because I just thought, Were our lineups so important that we missed what was actually important? I mean, what, what was so pressing that we ignored what was actually important for what was not important? I'm willing to bet there's at least one friend in your life that is fighting a battle you know nothing about. The only reason you don't know anything about that battle is because you haven't taking the time to ask. Assume. Assume it's the case. Assume that at least one person in your life is going through a battle you know nothing about. And just say, hey, how you doing? Really? And if you have anything going on in your life that I could ever pray for, hey, I'm not a counselor. I'm not a pastor. But hey, I, I, could, I could ask God to help you. That might mean the world to somebody who's going through a battle that no one knows about. The last norm that I believe you and I can experience in our friendships is what's normal is, hey, we can be friends as long as we agree on everything. Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Why can't we be friends? Because you don't vote like me. Okay, there's so many reasons. <laughs> People go, whoa, 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 I need to be with some people that are like-minded now. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I've seen way too many people over the past couple of years lose friends over one post. One post. And I just look and I just go, I don't think you had to lose a friend over it. Now, here's the deal. Now, I'm not the anti-social media guy. I'm actually, I actually like social media. I think we could use it to encourage people and think there's lots of benefits there. Now. 
Whenever we get to, a, a, to, to the social media interactions that we can have that can sometimes be uh, vitriolic, to say the least, I think there's two parts to play there. I think there's uh, the friend uh, that's doing the posting, and then there's the friend that's doing the reading of the post, and I think both sides have work to do. And so uh, I think when we're posting, okay, when, 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 we're, when we're thinking about these things, I, I think we really should, should stop and ask ourselves, okay, is what I'm about to post? that's about to create some sort of conversation. Is this the most beneficial platform for this conversation? I think that's something that we all should do. I think that's a great filter for all of us to go, man, where's the best place to have this conversation? Now, if you're on the receiving end of a post that drives you crazy, okay, that just irritates your guts out, okay, like it just fires you up, I think we all have to pause and go, are we going to give someone else that much power to steer our emotions? Are we going to give someone else that much power and 140 characters to steer our whole week, let alone our relationships? Do you know how many friends I have who post things I completely disagree with that I dearly love and spend time with? A lot. And I am not waking up trying to get them to stop posting. I've just removed the weight of our friendship from the internet. (laughs) I just just don't know why I would put that kind of pressure on my friendships that are incredibly valuable. I mean, just imagine if if this norm, if we got to constantly agree, okay, like I get it, you're like, no, we can't be friends, we can't be friends, but okay. Just imagine if we copy and pasted that norm into our marriages, okay? Imagine if wedding vows said, until disagreement, do us part. Like, what? Who would be married, okay? Some of you got in a disagreement on the way to church, okay? Some of you are fighting in the lobby over coffee, okay? Like, some of you, like, can't even get into the parking lot without a disagreement. She wanted to sit up front. He wanted to sit in back. It's a whole thing, okay? I get it. I mean, just imagine if we did that with parenting and said, hey, kids, I just want you to know, here's the deal. As long as we agree, we're good. But if we disagree, you're going to have to move out. I'm not your parent no more. Like, it's just like, what? We wouldn't have any kids. Like, just, but, but yet we'll do that with our friends? Because here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. If, if, if we continue to live with the norm of needing people to agree with us, to be friends with us, where we will eventually end up is alone. And I don't want that for anybody here. I don't want that for anybody listening. What's possible? Well, what's possible is valuing diversity in our circle. (laughs) Do you know what they said about Jesus? You know what Jesus' reputation is? It's it's here in in Matthew 11. It says, the son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Jesus had a reputation for being friends with people he didn't see eye to eye with. Tax collectors were viewed as traitors to the Jewish community. The only friends that tax collectors had were other tax collectors. And according to scripture, Jesus was friends with them. If Jesus, who is perfect, could be friends with tax collectors and sinners, Don't you think we, who are extremely flawed, could cut some slack to our friends who don't see CDC guidelines the same way we do? (laughs) I mean, just think about that for a second. I mean, he's got sinners and tax collectors he's sitting with. We're going, nope, I know we, nope, they can't come to our house anymore. I'm done with them. Really? I mean, do you ever just think about some of the things we will stand before God someday and tell him, well, God, they didn't see CDC the same as us. We're like, that's, that, that was your thing on the earth, really? I, I mean, we could be upset that someone doesn't see eye to eye with us. Or we could embrace the fact that God has put people in our life that have a perspective and perhaps an experience that we don't. And maybe it's one that we could, could learn from. I don't know what your friendships look like. My prayer today is that you would be intentional with the part that you play in them. 
you might be watching or listening to today's message. Um, and perhaps it's made you think of a couple things. I, I hope it's challenged all of us to be better friends. But I, I also believe that there are people here who could perhaps use some new friends, maybe better or more positive Christian relationships in their lives. Um, if you find yourself in that category, I invite you to consider getting yourself in a faith-filled community, in a small group of people that say, you know what, we've got one common goal, to help one another grow in our faith. And, and I know it, that can be a challenging thing formally and informally. Some of you are like, dude, I love friends who sharpen me and help me grow in my faith, but I don't know where to look. I, I, I don't know how, how, how to find that naturally. I know a lot of guys who want this. I know a lot of their wives are like, man, I wish you had some really like godly friends. And it's like, all right, so I, I just want to give you a couple of thoughts. See, the informal way of, of being in a small group is perhaps for you starting one. It's the old fashioned inviting people over to your home. The only difference, the only caveat is that you're just being intentional when they get there. One, you want to have some decent food, okay? You don't want them to leave just because the food's bad, okay? Bad, one bad celery, that's, that's the last time somebody came to your house, okay? So you want to have some decent food, and maybe you just, you, you get one book. You say, hey, we're just going to read a book together. Maybe, maybe you go through a book of the Bible. Maybe you go through a, a book in, in one of our bookstores. We got plenty of there for you to choose from. You just say, hey, I'm just going to invite a couple guys over to the house, and we're just, just going to be intentional. Hey, man, we're going to throw some food on the grill. Man, we're going to spend... 15 minutes in the Word, 30 minutes in the Word, and then maybe you watch the game after, but you just say, hey, you know what? I'm just, I'm just, I'm just going to be intentional with my life. I'm just going to invite some people over, and when they get there, just say, hey, we're, this, is, this is more than just hanging out. This is just more than a game, but we're actually going to try and go deeper in, in growing our relationship with God. Now, your second option is a formal way, and that's uh, signing up for a small group here at Eagle Brook Church. In fact, we've got a, a whole small groups directory that goes live next weekend. So you got about a week to pray about it, to go, you know what, Lord, is, is there a group of people that you want me to formally sign up to say, hey, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show up. If that's you today, or you can actually text the word groups to the number 77888. Again, you can text the word groups to the number 77888. We'll actually send you a link when that directory is live, and you can look through all of the different groups from different categories and say, hey, maybe, you know what, I'm going to consider joining, joining a group. And I know. That joining a community of believers can take us back to that grade school lunchroom where you're trying to figure out where in the world do I fit? And I believe that in that moment of vulnerability, God will take you by the hand. And I know that there are so many people that are here today, may not even be a Christian and you're at the loneliest place of your entire life. That's just where your life has gotten you. Maybe you showed up here today, you're going, I'm just here looking for something different. Maybe there's a group of people here that perhaps God has designed for me to be friends with. Man, we're so glad you're here. And you might think that you're alone, but what I want you to know is you've never been alone. God has been with you all along. And we're getting ready to sing a new song called Never Walk Alone. Walk Alone. Never Walk Alone. And it's just, it's just a song that just reminds us that God is with us in every season of our life. And as I believe we prepare for some new relationships and perhaps some new groups and some new friends. And I, I pray that we would be people that go to God first and say, Lord, Whatever it is that you have for this next season of my life, would you walk with me? Would you hold me by the hand and guide me through all the seasons of my life? So I invite you to sing this song and invite God in so you can join us as we sing. Oh
tempted to not believe that, when we are tempted to believe that you are not with us, God, I pray that by your spirit, you would come, Jesus, and help us have faith in that, help us believe in that, help us know it. We love you, Jesus, and again, thank you for this time being in your presence, and we pray all this in your name, amen. Amen, church. So good to be with you. Thank you again for being here. If you're watching online, thank you for being with us. I hope that you have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you next week.